All right. Excellent. Well, I'm going to ask uh, all of you come back, uh, come back and join us here and grab a seat. I know it's tough to tear away from the networking conversations. Okay, we're just getting ready to restart. Come grab a seat. So let me begin by introducing our next two talks. We're going to have uh, two talks in, uh, to do with logistics, and then uh, some short Q&A, and then another question uh, talk about um, with media applications. Oh, I just need you to back up to, there we go, thanks. So first, we're going to hear from Natish Umang from Johnson & Johnson about their work to optimize how trucks are packed for distribution. Then we're going to hear from Ed Heinbachel and David Osby of Savantex about their work developing so a software platform that leverages D-Wave technology to optimize logistics at the Port of Los Angeles. This is one of the first examples of quantum being used in a production application. Ed and David will be happy to take questions at the end of their talk, so please make sure to enter any questions that you may have in the orange Ask Q&A button to the left of the virtual conference platform. And that also holds for those of us who are here. You'll be able to ask your questions through the conference platform via that orange Ask Q&A button uh, in the bottom left-hand corner. And, and just a reminder, make sure to put those in as we're going through the various presentations, because that's very helpful feedback for the presenters. Um, we'll make sure to have a, a time for um, Q&A at that point. And our final talk before our lunch break will be from Kotaro Tanahashi, a uh, good friend of mine, we've known each other for several years, of Recruit Co. He and his team have used D-Wave to optimize the assignment of TV commercials to maximize their value with outstanding results. So um, thank you very much. And we are now going to invite to the stage Nitish Umang. Thanks, Nitish. Good to see you. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Nitish Shumang. I'm a senior manager in the digital and data science organization at Johnson & Johnson. Uh, so in this presentation, uh, I'll be talking about some of the work that we did in collaboration with uh, D-Wave in exploring quantum computing solutions to solve a business problem, which we refer to as the 3D cuboid loading problem. Uh, but before I go into the specifics of the collaboration, I wanted to talk a bit about our organization at JNJ. So uh, we are a team of uh, engineers and data scientists with expertise in the development and deployment of advanced analytical models based on OR optimization, simulation, and machine learning. Uh, we uh, develop solution methods to solve complex uh, decision problems in the supply chain space, uh, where typically you have many conflicting objectives and trade-offs and uh, you know, many uncertainties. Uh, uh, examples include applications in production scheduling, Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, examples include productions and application scheduling, multi echelon inventory optimization, uh, strategic capacity planning, and load planning problems. OK, so back in 2021, we started a collaboration with D-Wave uh, to explore uh, the use of quantum computing methods to solve business optimization problems. Uh, so the idea was really to educate our team about the potential of quantum computing and the company at large about what quantum computing can do in the business optimization space. Uh, and obviously, we wanted to validate the potential benefits of quantum computing in terms of solution performance, in terms of uh, you know, the computation time, and investigate you know, how uh, the solution performance scales with increase in problem size, as you add more complex features and constraints, uh, and uh, the cost of deploying quantum computing resources. So I, I just want to mention that uh, within JNJ, there are different organizations that are already uh, exploring the use of quantum computing in other applications, you know, such as drug discovery, uh, such as in conformational search, in molecular optimization, in chemical space. Uh, but the focus of this collaboration and this talk is going to be the 3D cuboid loading problem. Uh, and there are a couple of reasons why we chose the 3D cuboid loading problem. One is that uh, owing to its uh, inherent combinatorial nature, it lends itself uh, naturally to the quantum computing paradigm. And secondly, we had already developed in-house classical uh, 
OR-based algorithms you know, to solve the problem. So it was possible for us to compare our solution methods with the quantum hybrid solutions developed by D-Wave. Okay, so from a, a business perspective, uh, the efficient loading and packing of items uh, is, uh, you know, is very critical to JNJ to minimize transportation cost, uh, which includes fuel cost, but also uh, reducing CO2 emissions, uh, uh, to reduce the number of trips and relieve port congestion, and uh, to alleviate uh, supply chain pressures. So the specific challenge that, uh, that is faced by JNJ in this context is solving the 3D cuboid loading problem, which I'll describe in the next slide, uh, with item rotations in 2D and 3D space. Uh, JNJ engaged with D-Wave to explore quantum hybrid methods, and uh, the, the collaboration was in two phases. So phase one started in June 2021, and the main objective of phase one was to uh, uh, validate if the problem at hand is a good candidate for quantum computing. Uh, so D-Wave developed a formulation, and they developed some quick results, and uh, we were able to compare them with uh, our classical in-house approaches. And based on those findings, we uh, decided to proceed with phase two. And in phase two, uh, you know, we developed a proof of concept where we added more complex features and constraints to the problem, and we carried out extensive computational testing you know, to see how uh, you know, the algorithms compare and what, is, what works and what does not work. Uh, and uh, I'll elaborate on the results uh, in the later slides, but one of the key findings was that, sorry, please struggling with this. One of the key findings was that quantum hybrid approach uh, shows uh, significant benefits when, you, uh, when you're dealing with larger uh, real world problem sizes and complex constraints. Uh, and through the computational testing, we were also able to you know, quantify the commercial and technical benefits of using quantum computing, uh, uh, you know, for JNJ. So to describe the problem, the, the problem is uh, as follows. You know, we are trying to load a set of items into a set of cuboids to maximize the space efficiency or to minimize the number of cuboids that we need to load the set of items. And uh, the cuboid, uh, you know, can refer to a gay load. Uh, it can refer to... Uh, uh, you know, a shipper box, a uh, ocean shipping container, a truck, and so on, right? And the items can be single items or they can be cuboids themselves, right? Uh, other than the largest cuboid that we are trying to load into. Uh, apart from the uh, objective of maximizing space efficiency, we also want to maximize the homogeneity in loading with respect to SQ mix. So as far as possible, we want to have the items of same SQ grouped together, right? Uh, then we also want to optimize the distribution of cuboid sizes. For example, we, we may want to incentivize the loading of items into one large cuboid as opposed to two smaller cuboids of half the size. Uh, so in terms of the constraints, uh, in the base model, we are trying to model the arrangement and dimensions of items in 3D space. Right? That is the basic definition of the problem. But then, in addition to that, we can have uh, several uh, you know, practical constraints. For example, we want to have sufficient area support for all the loaded items. So, so you should not have items that are hanging in air, for example. Uh, we want to respect the weight crushing limits for each item, which are typically a function of the material SKU of the item. Uh, we want to adhere to SKU to cuboid compatibility constraints. You know, so for some items, you can have constraints uh, like, you know, uh, this specific SKU can only go into specific cuboid sizes, right? So we want to respect that. And then uh, we also want to respect the weight capacity constraints, both for the cuboid as a whole, but also for certain sections of the cuboids to ensure weight balancing. So we, we don't want the cuboid to be front-loaded or back-loaded or more uh, weight on the left or more weight on the right. You know, it should be as evenly distributed as possible. Okay. So in terms of uh, the development, D-Wave followed a phased approach you know, to develop, test, and refine the algorithms. Uh, and uh, the algorithms that were developed by D-Wave include an exact formulation that is solvable directly by D-Wave's uh, CQM solver, or it can be directly fed into uh, you know, one of the commercial solvers like Gurobi, Cplex, et cetera. And I, I just want to emphasize here, this is really important to me, like as an OR uh, person, you know, I, I don't need to worry about uh, translating the problem into a form uh, you know, which can be solved by the D-Wave's quantum computer. I can just write my MIP or MILP or MIQP and feed it to the CQM solver, and all the translation is hap happening in the back end. 
uh, then apart from the exact formulation, uh, they also developed an extreme point method where the idea is to uh, iteratively construct a solution uh, starting with a subset of items. So if you look at the So if you look at the uh, diagram on the right, uh, in each iteration you are uh, assigning a subset of items and you are identifying a set of candidate locations for the next subset of items. Uh, so basically in every iteration you're solving an exact problem, but it's a much smaller exact problem than the original problem. Uh, and this exact problem can again be solved using Gurobi or Cplex or D-Wave's uh, CQM solver. Uh, in addition to these two methods, uh, D-Wave, uh, the team at D-Wave, you know, came up with very you know, novel ideas, you know, so obviously they started with a single bin packing formulation and later extended it to multi-bin packing, you know, to make the formulation as generic as possible. But then they also came up with this idea of super items optimization, where the idea is to add a pre-processing step to the algorithm. Uh, so basically, if you have, let's say, six items of a given SKU, uh, you combine them into a single item, and you treat it as a single item, so you're reducing your problem size. And you can set a threshold limit, you know, which specifies, you know, the maximum number of items that you can have in a super item. So if your threshold limit is set to six, then, you know, uh, you can combine all the six items, but if it is set to five, then, you know, you can have, like, one super item containing five items and another super item containing one item. Uh, then, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we carried out extensive computational testing, you know, to compare these different algorithms, classical, quantum, uh, exact, extreme point. Uh, and uh, f uh, to facilitate the testing, obviously, we created a, a test bed of problem instances, which are based on sanitized data from JNJ use cases. So this is the result summary. So we uh, tested and compared all these different approaches for different problem sizes and different uh, problem features. Uh, one of the main findings was, and this is very intuitive, for the base model, uh, the super items approach demonstrated the best solution performance, which is not surprising, right, because we are solving a much smaller problem size, and therefore, you know, the convergence is faster, and the uh, problem, uh, the solution, uh, the, the problem, uh, the solution quality is much better, right? Now, for small test cases without area support, uh, which is, again, referring to the base model, but only for the small test cases, we found that the state-of-the-art classical solvers often show superior performance, right? So if you look at the table here, uh, we are, uh, you know, we have all the different problem sizes uh, with and without area support constraints, the number of scenarios that we tested for each uh, problem category, uh, and then in these three columns, you know, we have the number of scenarios in which Gurobi or CQM, uh, what, uh, you know, generated the best solution. So, uh, what we found additionally, and this was the most uh, interesting insight, uh, was that as we increase the problem size and as we add more practical constraints to the problem, uh, the extreme point heuristic vastly outperforms the exact methods. And this behavior you, know, you see in classical methods all the time. But in addition to that, the CQM solver in combination with the heuristic, you know, so in the extreme point heuristic, when you're using the CQM solver in every iteration to solve the exact problem, that produces superior results than Gurobi for many instances, you know, for five out of nine instances. So for example, if you look at this row here, the bottom row in this table, uh, for nine, uh, out of nine instances, CQM uh, generated the best solution for five out of nine, and there was a tie in two cases. So basically, in seven out of nine instances, CQM did better than Gurobi or as well as Gurobi. Uh, and uh, if you look at the plot here, you know, on the y-axis we have the utilization, you know, and the way we define the utilization is by summing up the volumes of the items and dividing it by the bin volume up to the occupied height, right? So basically we're trying to minimize H max, uh, right? So uh, if we compare the utilization for these nine instances, you know, you can see that uh, CQM is doing better than Gurobi in many cases, right? And these are the two instances, you know, where there is a tie uh, in the first one and the third one. Okay, so the key takeaway. So quantum computing, uh, based on what we found, uh, can solve conventionally hard optimization problems. And in some instances, uh, produce results that are competitive with or even outperform 
classical state of the art solvers you know so and i i want to mention here that we were using the latest version of gurobi uh, you know for the for the computational testing and comparison uh, so d d wave uh, developed a suite of algorithms with the potential to solve you know the business problem at hand and meet key business goals for jnj uh, and in particular we found that the cqm solver in combination with the smart heuristic based methods uh, shows promise uh, promise in solving real world business problems with practical constraints Uh, which are otherwise intractable using classical solvers. Uh, and of course, you know our, our collaboration with D-Wave was a great learning opportunity. I mean, personally, I learned a lot through our interactions and collaboration over the last one and a half years. Uh, in particular, you know, we uh, developed a better understanding of how to, uh, you know, map a problem to, uh, you know, a form that can be, uh, you know, uh, that makes it a good fit for quantum computing. and also uh, uh, you know what kind of problems are uh, you know are ideal candidates for quantum computing uh, and obviously you know it's a rapidly evolving technology and with further advances in uh, hybrid processors and quantum solvers we expect the solution space to further expand the application space to further expand and um, uh, you know my personal expectation is that at some point uh, uh, quantum hybrid solutions will become the natural choice to solve certain classes of Uh, business problems and through this collaboration we feel that we are better prepared for that transition you know whenever that happens so uh okay that's all i had uh thanks for your time and i'll be around to take any questions thank you